Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, we do not have the Nicene Creed in today's liturgy or the glory and excelsis at the end. Today we come together on All Souls Day. This is the day that we remember the faithful departed. And we have to understand that the church is much, much bigger than what we see on earth today. The church has been here for 2,000 years. And the vast majority of Christians have gone into eternity. And only a small minority are here on earth or on earth at, at any one time. The church of God is divided between the church militant here on earth, the church expectant, and the church triumphant in heaven with Christ. And we keep this day of All Souls Day every year as a remembrance that those who have died in Christ yet are alive. That the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is the God of the living, not of the dead. In fact, I think it can be well said that those who have entered into eternity are in some ways even more alive than we are because they see reality where we still so often just look through a glass darkly. What we know by faith, they know by sight because they're there and they see. We read in the book of Revelation about the souls under the altar, how their prayers ascend before God. We know that those who have departed hence from us, they pray and we pray. And it's prayer that binds us together. In the creeds, we call this the communion of saints, that the church militant here on earth the church expected in paradise, the church triumphant in heaven, are all one, one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. A church is holy because Christ is its head and he is holy. A church is holy because the Holy Spirit dwells within it, sanctifying its members. A church is Catholic because it's for all races, of all nations, of all peoples, for all time. A church that's apostolic, because it began with the Apostles' Fellowship and continues on to this day, because we have an apostolic ministry in historic succession. And that church will endure until Christ returns. And as we read in our epistle lesson today, the day will come. When, we do not know. But we can pray, Maranatha, come Lord, come in our day. But the day will come when we'll look into the eastern sky and there'll be what appears to be just a small cloud way in the distance. But that cloud will be moving closer and closer to us. It'll become larger and larger and we'll wonder, what is that? Then suddenly we'll hear the trump of God and the, and the shout of the archangels and we'll recognize that that's not just a cloud but it's 10,000 times 10,000 angels coming with the Lord and the dead in Christ will be raised and we who are alive in Jesus will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and we'll all be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and there will we be with him forever. Paradise lost will become paradise restored. God will come to dwell with us on earth and there'll be no temple because he will be in the midst of us. Creation will be renewed. We will become the heirs of all that is. All that we go outside at night and, and see when we look up into the sky, we will become inheritors of that. Heirs of God. Co-heirs with Christ. All that Adam and Eve lost at the fall will be restored to us as our inheritance. So my brothers and sisters, today as we gather together around the Lord's table, let's look forward to that eschatological 
Lord's Supper. That marriage supper of the Lamb. Where there we will be gathered together with the saints of all the ages. And we'll all have our own personal family reunions. But also that great family reunion of the body of Christ. And then as that great hymn, Amazing Grace, says, When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son.